Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today's message is, oh no. Now, here's Bill Ahmed. The story is told of a Christian barber. And at his church, they were having a big series on how to share your faith. Because a lot of Christians don't share their faith very well. So there's this big sermon series, and then there were some seminars on how to share your faith. And as this series went along, the barber became convicted that not only should he share his faith, but he could share his faith. And he's a barber. All these people come to him every day. So he listened during the seminars, took notes, learned some methods for sharing his faith, some Bible text he could use. He was ready to go. Now, as you can imagine, he's a little nervous, a little antsy about this. It's difficult to share your faith. He doesn't want to offend anybody. Certainly doesn't want to lose any customers. And so every day it seemed like there was a reason. It didn't, wasn't quite right. It wasn't the right person. And finally one day he says, Lord, tomorrow the first person that walks in, we're just doing it. So the next morning he's getting ready. And he hears the bells from the door and he turns and looks. And who walks through the door but a big old biker dude. He's got on the leather vest and the patches and the chains and the tattoos. He wants a shave and a cut. So Barbara gets him settled down and he's getting his tools ready and his mind's racing. What am I going to say? How am I going to say it? What's the right approach to use? And he's in that last step where they're honing that straight razor. Guys, have you ever gotten to shave this way? This seems incredibly dangerous to me, right? I, somebody I don't know is going to hold a razor-sharp thing against my throat. So, this, so he's, he's doing this. He's getting ready. His mind's racing. He's, we're just going to do it. And he turns around, razor in hand. He looks at the biker in the chair, and he says, Are you ready to die? <laughs> I don't think that came out just quite right. But many of us sympathize with that barber. Say, yeah, I would, I would screw it up like that. That would be horrible, you know? And we never share our faith. But see, the problem is we don't go to the end of the story because after a few words of surprise from the biker that we can't repeat in church, um, some nervous laughter and a little explanation, the barber was able to share his faith with that biker. Yeah, he fumbled the ball, but he bent over and picked it up and kept on going. And today's message is called, Oh No. Because whenever anybody talks about sharing your faith, that's the first thought we all have, right? Oh no. Because when I say the word evangelism, you probably have one of two pictures in your head. One is going door to door, knocking on doors, you got a booklet or a pamphlet to hand out. Um, you're experiencing lots of rejection, <laughs> doors being closed, maybe doors not even being answered. You're hot, you're tired, but hey, you're doing the Lord's work. The other picture is some evangelistic series. And Mr. Super Dynamic Speaker comes, and he says just the right words at just the right time, with just the right music, and just the right graphics on the screen, and it's wonderful. You think, well, I could never do that. And the problem is that if you had that second picture in your mind, they usually make you do that first one to get to the second one. Right? And we just think, this is horrible. I can never do this. But we can do it. And we can do it very easily in today's society. And that's what we're going to talk about today is some ways you can do that. And we can get through some of these things. We don't have to be um, the, the biggest knowledge in the Bible. We don't have to know the most. We don't have to be an expert. There's things that we can do that will help us share our faith. 
All right, and so we're going to look at a couple things today. And the first thing I want to look at is a Bible text. Before we do that, anytime you look at a Bible text in the Bible, you need to be able to look at that and say, is this something that applies to all people at all times, or does this apply to a specific place and time? Okay? Um, right? Does what God said apply to a time and a place, or is it for everyone at all times? Let's take some real obvious examples, some easy ones that get started. God said, right? If God said it, we better do it, right? God said to Noah, build a boat. So we better all get busy building boats, right? No, right? I think that was a message for Noah for a time and a place. God tells Abraham to sacrifice his firstborn son and then stops him in case you forget the story. So that means we should all try and sacrifice our firstborn. No, I don't think so, right? So there's some real obvious examples, but we have to look at something and say, Alex is happy because Evan just got sacrificed and not him. <laughs> I see Alex grinning ear to ear back there. But, you know, that, that we need to look at that when we look at the Bible and see what, what is it for? Who is this for? Is it for everybody at all time, or is it for just a time and a place? As we look at this passage, I want us to, to think about that. So let's turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. Get out your Bibles, your devices, Matthew chapter 28. And while you're turning there, I want to set up where this happens in the timeline. This is after Jesus has been crucified. He was dead in the grave for three days. He rose again. He's appeared to people, to the disciples. He's appeared to a crowd of people. He's been around Jerusalem, okay? But this is kind of where we are in the timeline. And let's look and see what he says. Everybody there? Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee and to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Now before we talk about, is this applied to everybody or not, there's one thing in here that gets me every single time we read this text. And by the way, if you're the kind of person that marks in your Bible, you know who you are and you don't have this highlighted, you're doing it wrong, okay? And if you're the kind of person that just can't bring yourself to write in your Bible, you're my people, I'm with you, okay? But if, you, if you're a highlighter kind of person, this, this verse should be highlighted, this passage should be highlighted for you. But look at what it, what it says here. They saw him, they worshiped him, and some doubted. Really? I mean, really? I mean, if I just spent three years walking around with somebody, they've been dead, and now we're back. That's like enough for me, right? Somebody says, well, what's he going on? I don't know. Whatever the dead guy says goes, man. <laughs> I'm with him. You just listen to him. It's okay. Right? I mean, that's enough. But some doubted, and it's okay. Jesus doesn't dress them down, say, hey, what's wrong with you guys? He doesn't get after them. It's okay to have doubts. All right. That always gets me every time we read that. We go on. So... Now, the question is, does this apply to everyone or just to the 11 disciples? Now, before you answer that, let's go through the process, because this one's kind of an easy one, but I want to go through the process so you learn, because it's important in this particular verse. If this applies to only the 11 disciples, because remember, Judas has killed himself, so there's only 11 disciples. If this applies only to those 11 disciples, then there's a whole bunch of people we've got to stop listening to. Billy Graham, 
Charles Spurgeon, Martin Luther, Ellen G. White, the Apostle Paul. Because none of them were there when Jesus said, go tell. So that means we shouldn't listen to those people anymore because God didn't tell them to do that. Well, that seems kind of silly, right? We don't believe that. Because this does apply to everybody, and Jesus kind of says it, right? He says, I want you to go and teach them to obey how much? Everything I have commanded you. So they're supposed to go and tell people everything, which includes go tell people, right? So this applies to everybody for all time. Everybody. Who's everybody? Everybody. Do you get to get out of it if your skin color's a certain color? Do you get to get out of it if you have a certain amount of money in the bank? Do you get to get out of it if you're famous? What about if you're old or young? Everybody. That includes you. See, and one of the things that we have gotten so wrong in Christianity is that we have abdicated what God told us to do to somebody else. And that person's name is Pastor Chris. He just left. <laughs> he's dealing with allergies this morning, so he's, he's having a hard time this morning. So... Right? But we have said, hey, that's the pastor's job. That's the evangelist's job. I don't want to do that. That's like scary. I didn't go to seminary. Right? I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. And we're going to talk about that today. Okay? Now, imagine that you were... Um, so the thing we learned from that is the Great Commission is for everyone, capital letters... Not just the pastor or a few people, right? That includes the person in the back row, the person in the front row, everybody in between. Now, imagine that you were seeking God. You know, you were maybe far away from God and you said, you know, I gotta, I'm trying to find God, see if this is real. And you walk into a church. And that week at church, some guy gets up, tells about what God has done in his life. It's a pretty great story sits down. You're like, man, that was, that was cool. Next week you come back. Same guy gets up, tells the same story. Third week, same guy, same story. Fourth week, same guy, same story. Fifth week, same guy, same story. What are you thinking? Christianity is just for that dude. And it apparently doesn't apply to the rest of us. Right? What if you came to a church and it wasn't just one person but it was a whole bunch of people that were saying it. That would be a lot more compelling, wouldn't it? That would be a lot more compelling. That's like when you go to Amazon, and it's got one review. Do you buy that thing? No. I want something with like a thousand reviews and see how it's doing, right? That's not my idea. That's God's idea. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It says, But if an unbeliever or someone who does not understand comes in while everybody is prophesying, he will be convinced by all that he is a sinner and will be judged by all, and the secrets of his heart will be laid bare. So he will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. What then shall we say, brothers, when you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction or a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation? All of these must be done for strengthening of the church. Who is supposed to have a word? Everyone. All y'all. Okay? A little southern there for you. So y'all is just part of you, but all y'all is all y'all. Okay? 
So, you know, we have, to, we have to think about this. You know, how much more powerful would it be if it was Celebration Sabbath and we see a whole bunch of people talking about what God has done for them, like we had last week? That's a lot more powerful, isn't it? It's a lot more powerful. All right, how many of you know the name HMS Richard Sr.? Anybody here recognize that name? A couple of us. Today you will all know that name. HMS Richard Sr. was an Adventist pastor here in Los Angeles in the 1920s. That's where we're picking up the story. 1920. He had a very small congregation in Southgate. A small working class congregation, not unlike this one. Okay? Now the 1920s, radio is coming on. And it's, it's popular. People are buying radio, sitting in their house, listening to the radio. And it, we forget what a massive shift this was in society. Because before that, when it got dark, you went inside and you hung out with your family. <laughs> you played games, you read a book, you did something together as a family. Now all of a sudden, you go inside and you turn on and you listen to your favorite program on the radio. Massive, massive society shift. But HMS Richards saw the radio as a way to reach people for God. He said there's more people being born every day than we can preach to. So we should use the radio to help reach people. And he got a lot of pushback. And people said, you can't do that. Right? We're going to hold a church service for nobody on the radio? That's, that doesn't work. Some people said, hey, the, the radio, you know, that's the devil's instrument. You can't use that. There's things on the radio that don't match up with our Christian values. And by the way, that was true. Just like today, there's stuff on TV that doesn't match our Christian values, and there's stuff on the internet that doesn't match our Christian values. And they said, you can't do that. But HMS Richard Sr. would not be dissuaded. So, he started a little campaign where he would use his suit jacket pocket, his side pocket on his suit jacket, and people could put in a little bit of money to help with the radio program. And after service, he would find a few dollars, maybe some coins in his pocket. Sometimes he would find a piece of jewelry that somebody had turned in. Sometimes he even found eyeglasses and gold teeth. I got to tell you, you are all in when you're giving up your eyeglasses and your gold teeth, right? You are all in. So I got to read this part because I want to get these dates right. By 1929, they had their first program. And shortly after that, in 1937, the voice of prophecy was born. In 1942, he had his first coast-to-coast -coast broadcast with 89 radio stations. And today we have Faith for Today, Voice of Prophecy, It is Written, Breath of Life. Um, we have some newer ministries, Life Talk Radio, Jesus 101, and of course Adventist World Radio. And that doesn't even include all the Spanish and other language stations. And if you went to a general conference meeting and told them, we should spend less money on radio and TV, they would laugh you out of the room. Because it works. Linda's family is Adventist because of it. My family is Adventist because of it. And I'm sure a bunch of others in here are too. It works. But we all say, I can't do that. I can't get on TV and preach. I don't know how to do that. That may be true. Let's see if I can get this out of my pocket here. But we all have one of these. Right? We all have a cell phone. We've all got internet connection or Wi Fi. And you have everything you need to share the gospel. Oh, no. You don't have to spend any money at all. All right? So I want to talk a couple ways about how you can do that. Let's talk, you know, we're going to talk about how we can share our faith digitally. Okay? Because that's how we're going to reach people. You know how many billions of people log on to Facebook every day? Three. Three billion people. 
Think about that. Three billion people. You could reach all those people if you wanted to. All right? So, Facebook and Instagram, I want to talk for a moment about how they work. Because most of us don't really know how they work. And we've heard of the algorithm. Right? It's even in commercials now. The algorithm. What's it going to do to you? The algorithm is a closely guarded secret, much like the Coke recipe, right? It's locked in a safe somewhere. But it, we know generally how it works. And the way it works is like this. The average person has liked too many things for Facebook or Instagram to show you everything from those people when you log in, right? We've liked Coca-Cola and Nike and Levi jeans and our favorite football team and our favorite basketball team and our favorite baseball team and our favorite soccer team and we've liked some actors and some movies. We've got a thousand online friends. Hopefully we've liked the Seventh-day Adventist church, you know. So we've got all these things we've liked. And Facebook says, when you log in, I can't show you all this stuff. It's too much. So I've got to find the best stuff and only show you the best stuff. Well, how does it find the best stuff? It looks at who is commenting, liking, or sharing it. If somebody likes, comments, and shares, it says, oh, people liked that. And so it shows it to more people. And more people like, comment, and share. And it grows and grows and grows and eventually goes viral. Right? A very few posts actually go viral, but that's the goal. Now, you could have the best content in the world. I mean, it is just the coolest, greatest thing ever. If nobody likes, comments, or shares it, it dies. It doesn't get shown to anybody. An average business or page, like our church page, our posts go to about 10% of the people who have liked our page. So right now we have a little over 700 likes on our page. That puts us about 60 to 70 people see our posts. Okay? I have a truck page where I have 370,000 followers. Blows my mind. Just looking at old trucks around the world. When I post, about 35,000 people see it. Okay? Now, sometimes we get a really great truck and it goes crazy and like a million people will see it. But most of the time, 35,000, 40,000 people see it. That's all it sees it. So, how do you improve that? You like, comment, and share on the church posts. Now, nobody's going to like, comment, and share every post. Okay? But find something that you like. Comment, share on it. Now, something you should know. A like is like a coin. That's like a dime or a quarter. It's not worth a lot, but it's something. A comment is like a dollar, maybe a $5 bill. A share, that's a straight up $20 bill, okay? So, you know, that's just how Facebook kind of grades those things, okay? So some of them are worth more than others, all right? And Facebook and Instagram work similarly there. Not exactly the same, but similarly there. So you can be a digital missionary and help more people hear about God by only commenting, liking, or sharing church posts. Super easy. Super easy, okay? Now, um, another thing you can do, and we're going to start this here pretty soon, is we're going to start making some really short videos like two or three minutes, and Gustavo doesn't know this yet, but he's the first one. <laughs> and now he can't turn me down. I have been wanting to tell Gustavo's story for like, I don't know, how long have you been here, Gustavo? 15 years or something now? 21 years. Time flies when you're having fun. Gustavo has a really amazing story of how he moved from being far from God to being close to God. And I've gotten our local uh, film resident who's not here today, they're visiting family. Ethan is going to help us make some stories. They're going to be very short videos, two or three minutes. Hey, Gustavo, tell us about how you moved from 
from being away from God to being close to God? How did, how did the church help you in this? What happened? And just tell a story. And we're going to put those up. Because we have stories. And sometimes we think our story's got to be amazing. I've got to, you know, fallen from the heights to the depths and be in jail and God saved me, you know. No. It's okay to have a story like that. Some of us have stories like that. But some stories, we say, my story's boring. I was born in the church. I was raised in the church. That's boring. Guess what? That's where most people are. And that story reaches a whole segment of the population that that famous rags to riches story doesn't reach. Because they're like, well, I was never in jail. I don't know what that's like, right? I just, I wasn't an axe murderer, raping and pillaging. I just was an average Joe. Okay? So that story reaches people too. So we're going to be hitting you up. I want to hear your stories and share them. Because some of you have some amazing stories. Some of you have some average stories. And all those reach different people. We want to get those out. Okay? Um, the other thing that you can do is when you, make, when you come to church, take a picture. Hey, I was here at church with my friend. Uh, check in. Do something. Maybe take a picture of pastor preaching or the band or the children's story. Whatever happens. If you tag us, we will like and comment on your post. Help you get more people to see it. That helps more people see about the church, too. You're just helping to spread the word. Hey, I'm a Christian. I go to church. You got any questions? You can ask me. Some of us are natural encouragers. Right? And we encourage one another. And we do things like, hey man, I know you've got your job interview today. I'm praying for you. And we text somebody or we email somebody. Hey, I know you've got that doctor's appointment today. I hope it's good news. I'm praying for you. Hey, I know you're struggling in your marriage right now. I'm praying for you. Hey, I know whatever. I'm praying for you. Jesus loves you. We can encourage one another this way. I have a wonderful person that sends me a devotional every single day. And at first I thought this person thought I needed, you know, like more instruction in my life. <laughs> I wasn't doing things just right. Here, if you read this, you'll be better off. But then I realized, no, this person loves me. This person cares about me. Enough to send me a devotion every single day. Right? We can do those kinds of things. One other thing here. I put up this big list of ten things that you can do. We're not going to talk about these a lot, but I want to hit them real quick. Number one, you can set your status or profile to a Bible text. Super easy. What about your email signature? Put a Bible text. Put John 3.16, something. Change it once in a while. Keep it fresh. Super easy to reach people doing that. Now the next two, three here, two, three, and four, are, are a little bit the same. Number two is write a blog. Some of us are writers. We like to write. We like to journal. We like to do things. Write a blog. Blogs kind of blew up, then died. They're coming back strong. Maybe you have a blog, something you want to say. Um, you can start a YouTube channel. Maybe you don't like to write, but you're willing to get on video. Right, TV land? Right? Some of us like to do that. Maybe we could launch a podcast that might be video or might be um, uh, just audio, whatever. We like to talk. And these things don't have to be overtly Christian. You don't have to be doing a Bible study or wading through the depths of prophecy in Daniel and Revelation because some of us are like, I, don't, I can't do that. Maybe you have always wanted to get involved in a, uh, some kind of hobby. You know, I always wanted to learn to knit. So I'm going to start a, a little YouTube channel on learning to knit. Now, I'm going to bet, and I've never done this, but if you go out and search, like, how to knit and crochet on YouTube, you're probably going to find, like, a million videos, right? And they're all experts, right? And they'll all go, like, man, and you're like, what just happened? Right? Grandma knitted that in five seconds, and I don't know what she did, 
right? So start when it says, hey, I'm going to learn how to do this, and we're going to, we're going to go through this together, and we're going to, we're going to make mistakes, right? And, and just start doing it. People will start watching. And at the end, put a Bible text up. Or just say something, man. I'm grateful, you know, God's blessed me today. We're learning in it. This has been fun. That's all. It doesn't have to be a big deal, right? I want a garden. I don't know how to grow upside down tomatoes. Some people are growing tomatoes hanging upside down. I don't know why you do this, but maybe you've wanted to try it. How do you get the water to stay in the plant when it's upside down? I, I don't know. But you're going to experiment and figure it out. Put the video up. And talk about how God um, is, is so great with the plants he provides. Right? There's stuff that we can do that we're all into. It might be old trucks. And someday you'll have 370,000 followers. And all you did was put up pictures of trucks. Because I make sure a couple times a year that I tell them, that I'm going to church, VBS is one time every year. Hey, going to VBS this week, there's not gonna be a lot happening on just old trucks. And you should see the people that pour in, amen, way to go. Keep it for the kids, okay? A time to reach potentially 370,000 people because I share pictures of trucks. By the way, if you like trucks, Hang out with just old trucks. All right. Number five, some of us are artists. We can create visuals that we can share the gospel and put them on social media. By the way, if you're an artist, graphic artist, regular artist, I, I'm dying for your help. So I try and create stuff here for church, and I am not good at this, okay? So, um, you know, that would be something you could do. Um, number six, some of us might start an online Bible study over Zoom or Hangouts or FaceTime or whatever you use. We do this in my small group. Um, Alberto and Umberto have joined us um, over, over Hangouts. Okay? You can do this. All, most of us have a computer and Wi-Fi. It's, it's easy to do. Okay? Some of us might do audio devotions for WhatsApp. Um, we could reach out to friends on social media with encouraging notes. We talked about that. Some of us might produce devotional videos where we like to video some, some scenes or something and then have a, just a short devotional thought. We might build a ministry website. There's just so much you can do. And you have all of the tools you need to do it right here. You don't have to buy anything. This is a zero-cost thing. Okay? And you might say, well, I don't know how to do it. Guess what? I didn't know how to preach once upon a time. Some would say I still don't, but that's okay. <laughs> Can't listen to the haters, man. Can't listen to the haters. So you can do this. You can reach out. See, because you have friends that I don't have, that Pastor Chris doesn't have that Gustavo doesn't have, that Mario doesn't have, right? We've all got our different circles of friends, people that you're going to reach that I am never going to reach. Even with the coolest old trucks in the world, I am not going to reach them, okay? But you will. You will, okay? I also put in your uh, notes there, there's a website, um, sdadata.org. That's a big website for big data and churches, but there's a resource section. Check out that resource section because it'll talk about this stuff and more there, help you get started. If you have questions, please talk to me or anybody younger than the age of 25. They can tell you how to do all this stuff, okay? Super easy and it's, it's something we can do and it will help us be digital missionaries and reach out just like HMS Richard Sr. did. We can do this. And if we are going to take the gospel to every nation and tongue, that includes the people that live right here in Los Angeles. Because there's a whole bunch of people right here that need to hear about God. It's not just some faraway place in the jungle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
Lord, help us to have the courage that it takes to step out in a little bit of faith. Help us to be willing to, to try something that's a little different that maybe stretches us and makes us grow, Lord. Maybe we're going to have times where we fumble the ball, but it'll be okay, Lord. We saw in the children's story, those are the times when you pick us up and carry us. Lord, help us to be convinced and convicted that this message to go tell applies to all of us, no matter how old or how young or how long we've been in church or any other factor, Lord. It applies to all of us. Help us to realize that. Help us to internalize that, Lord. Maybe after we tell one person, it won't be so scary when we tell the second person. Lord, we're grateful for all you've done for us. We're grateful for the example you set of us of doing ministry, Lord. Be with us now. In Jesus' name, amen.